in this instructional video, I am going to go through test one, semester one, 2024, particularly for those who didn't do so well in the test and will be doing a reset of a different test, but the, the same and similar sort of questions. Um, I will do it from the point of view of looking at test technique and that sort of thing first. So uh, I think the very first thing to do is to put your name and a student ID on the test. So I'm going to go with Stu, Stu Ideal. Uh, perhaps I should uh, do this in red. Um, rather than in black so it's easily seen as to what I have added so yeah um, so this is going to be stew ideal and his um, I'm going to uh, his student ID number is two three four seven six five one six Okay, um, yeah, just to uh, put that in there. So that's good old stew ideal. So the first thing we do in a test is the five minutes of reading time, 40 minutes of writing time. We'll see that this is 23, worth 23 marks for the test, 15% of the final grade. Um, so, you know, approximately two minutes per mark, just slightly under. So we'll go with that. Uh, so let's got the examples here. Something about uh, cheating. We're allowed to have uh, calculators uh, here. So I've got a calculator handy. I recommend the a very basic calculator rather than the fancy graphical ones. Um, it's not as uh, less chance of going wrong with one of those, but um, that's possibly a very old school. Make sure your calculator's uh, got a good battery and it's going. Yes, non programmable calculators are allowed, and the iFans. Uh, and everything capable of connecting should not be available. It's a closed book test, so it's under controlled situation, and you do have a formula sheet uh, which is given to you. Enter your student ID number and the name and the space provided. In this case, there is no space provided, so just at the top of the sheet, all answers must be written in the spaces. Cross out any work you do not wish to be marked. Show all working in calculations to obtain full marks. So I'm just going to underline all working. Give answers to three significant figures unless otherwise specified. So again, underlining that and answer all the questions. Right, so... Um, what I would recommend is that you go through uh, when you're in the reading time and go through and look at all the questions and determine which ones you can do easily and which ones are a little trickier and sort of make a mental note as to your pathway or how you plan to go through the test. So very important that you you've got some blank pages there for working and then there's a formula sheet as well so yeah work out your strategy and then sort of start looking at the, the questions and strategizing as to how you're going to do each of the individual questions but yes i would recommend and determining the order. Do the easy marks first. 
you don't want to spend time on hard questions and then find you run out of time and you can't answer questions or because of time constraints questions that you could have answered so let's uh, have a look at question 1a is worth two marks expand and simplify so this is uh, two brackets here and we can see that we can use uh, this method here it has various names there showing not having much luck with my arrows here like that so we would uh, also known as foil first uh, which is that one there 7d times 2 14d outer oh, sorry first got it wrong fortunately with this here I can just undo it yeah first is 7d times 2d which is 14 d squared yep or d to the power of 2 next is the one that I just did 7d times 2 which is 14 d first outer inner which is 9 times 2d which is 18 d and then last which is it's negative 18d don't forget the negative sign there negative 18d so yes make sure that you've got that there it's very easy to slip up on those negatives as you saw there so just you probably best to take your time and negative 18d and then the final one with, that was the inner and then the last one negative 9 times 2 is negative 18 okay now we have to pull all that together and I've used up quite a bit of the room in there however we'll see if we can pull it all together 14 g squared uh, there and then 14 D plus 14 D minus 18 D minus 18 we're a bit tight in there right now we can pull that together um, 14 D is um, 14d there's no other 14d squared there's none other of those i'm going to write this down here 14d squared and then we have plus 14d minus 18d negative 4d yeah 14d squared minus 4d so 14d squared plus 14 minus 8 is minus 4 and then we've got minus 18 okay and yes expand and simplify and yes all right Now, when we look at that, we can see 14D, 4D, and 18D are all even numbers and divisible by 2. So, expand and simplify. Um, we could 
put that into a bracket and that could sort of further simplify it. Um, you don't have to do that. I think this is as simple as it gets here, but I'm just going to show it here. Uh, some people may have done this. Um, probably wouldn't hurt to go that little step further, that little step for, further. Um, like so. 2 times 7d squared minus 2d minus 9. Now in terms of the marking for this, um, the marking you would get, definitely get one mark for the extent, extent for the expansion and then one mark here for the simplification. If it would, were me, I definitely would give uh, one mark here, but going that extra step does show your knowledge and the purpose of these the purpose of a test really is for you to showcase your knowledge to the examiner so you should take every opportunity to show that you really know your stuff and see how things are you know progressing from there okay my little catchphrase, hello, Mario, didn't come out at the beginning. So there you are. You haven't missed out for those of you that were concerned about that. <laughs> or one of you called Mario. Right. Fully factorise 6k squared minus 12k minus 18. So factorize, hmm, that means to break it up into factors. Now looking at that question there, I can see that that is a quadratic equation, a polynomial order 2. The squared gives it away. It's a quadratic. So typically we are are going to have some brackets which I'll put over here two sets of brackets but I can also see that there's a factor there 6 12 18 now I know my 6 times table and 6 times 1 is 6 6 times 2 is 12 6 times 3 is 18 so that suggests that we have there a factor of 6 that could go outside of or is a factor in each of those bits of the or terms of the equation. So we could put a 6 outside here and go k squared minus 2k minus 3 k squared minus 2k minus 3 okay Wrong. Oh, am I wrong? K squared minus 2K minus 3. Yes, that's what I get. Right. Yes. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, 
When I look at that, I see a negative 3 here. That tells me that the, well, back the truck up a little bit. I can put an X in here, and I can put an X in here, and I will look at some factors of 3. Now, 3 is a prime number, so we've got 1 times 3 is 3. Both of those are prime, so they're the only factors of 3. Looking here, I see a negative, and that tells me that one of the factors must be positive, and the other negative. Looking here, I see a negative. That tells me that the largest one must be negative, and the smaller one, positive. And I had the six outside all along. So there is my answer. Exactly there like that so in this instance there would be one mark for here for taking the six outside the brackets and one mark here these are the factors six x plus one x minus three you'll note that the equation is not equal to zero therefore Therefore, we cannot solve it. We cannot get a solution. We can just factorize it. So that's all we need to do. Factorize it. So that's it. Number two was done. Right. Let's look at number C. Well, let, let's look at question C. Letter C. Determine two as a percentage of square root 5 to the nearest 1%. I'm going to underline that because that's key, to the nearest 1%. It's only worth one mark. It can't be too hard. Remember that usually the hardest questions are at the end of the test. We start with the easy ones. It's a cunning plan. To build up your confidence so that you think you know you, you build getting us getting us I'm getting us and it just pushes you a little bit further determine two as a percentage of the square root of five to the nearest one percent so essentially a, a percentage is a, a fraction of a hundred so first thing, we've got to find a fraction. So 2 of the square root of 5. That typically means over. So we can go 2 over square root of 5. That's a fraction. 2 over square root of 5. We know that the square root 2 is um, approximately, well, 2 is exactly the square root of 4. So the square root of 5 is just going to be slightly bigger than 2, so it's going to be, it's a, a fraction, a proper fraction. And then to make it a percentage, we just multiply by 100. And there we go. On our little calculator, we get, well, I'm just getting my calculator out here, my trusty FX... 82ms that one of my children left at home after heading out into the world not needing a calculator so here we go 2 divided by square root of 5 I'm just going to push equals at that point and then multiply that by times 100. And equals. I got 8.9 times 10 to the power of 3, hmm, which is uh, not much uh, of great help to me 
so I'm going to have to push some sort of button somewhere to uh, get that in there maybe uh, let me think here mode um, I'll just push one uh, no it doesn't like that um, shift mode okay mode um, all clear mode no no good let this be a lesson to you um, that um, you need to know how to operate your calculator before the test all clear mm, no that's not going to work shift mode okay oh well um right let's uh see if we can do this another way um no i don't know what i've got here so don't panic you're in a uh, in a exam situation uh, shift clear okay all okay three now reset all, all clear uh, it's not the mo that is the mode button isn't it mode oh that's statistics register comes um all clear shift mode two okay no i'm struggling here to get my calculator to work i don't know that it's um doing the right thing let me see here and we'll use the calculator on my phone which i'm not supposed to have here okay here we go um right so um two divided by five Square root <coughs> equals times <coughs> one hundred equals eighty nine point four four two seven. Oh, that's nice and accurate. It's times a hundred percent. So let's put the percent in here. But well, hang on a minute, I've got something there underlined to the nearest one percent. So that would be eighty nine percent. And that would be worth one mark. Um, if you put 89.4427% you'd probably only get half a mark because that wouldn't be to the nearest 1% right ok moving right along now I'm probably taking a little longer than I would in an exam situation just, just saying because I'm Taking it at pains to explain it how I go, but do take your time and yeah, I, you can learn little lessons from my mistakes as well. Like make sure you have got your calculator set up. I had the right wrong mode. I can't. Uh, I still can't get it uh, right there. I'll have to have a look at that. Maybe have to read the instruction book at some point. Right. Express. Four two two five five seven six zero 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 in certain scientific notation or oh, scientific notation correct to three significant figures three significant figures so scientific notation right so 
the first thing is that the decimal point is going to go in here. Because it always has one whole number. Yeah, a whole number. And then the decimal point. Okay. And we want only three, ooh, three significant figures. So it's going to be, uh, the three significant figures would be the 422. However, let's get it written out here. 4.2255760000. Now, as you can see, that's a very big number. Imagine if you had that much money in the bank. You would be very wealthy. So you've moved the decimal point from here. So it's going to be times 10 to the power of something. And you've moved the decimal point from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 points. So it'll be times 10 to the power of 9. It's a big number, so that 9 will be positive. Okay. Now, wait up a little bit. That's not the three significant figures. That's got way too many. So we write it now into three significant figures. 2, 3, 4.23. We um, we raised it, we, we rounded the 2 up to 3 because it was followed by a 5. Okay. And then times 10 to the power of 9. Okay. And we state, in brackets usually, three significant figures. Because we're showing the, the examiner or the marker what we're doing. We know what we're doing. That is three significant figures. That is done very well. Okay, and we get one mark for that. Good Lord. We worked hard for that one mark. Right, coming up. One more. Simplify. Writing this expression in the lowest terms possible. Three marks. Right, let's have a bit of a look at this. Now we can see there k squared. And then we've got a bracket. 3p squared plus p minus 4. And a bracket. A squared term in a bracket. So the squared term in the bracket. Well the squared term. In the, in the bracket is definitely a polynomial and it's a quadratic and it could well be factorizable. We look down below and we've got nine, we've got P's and K's combined. So, mm, that's um, very interesting. So what to do here? Um, exactly what to do here. Um, there's a number of things that we could do here, but, um, that uh, quadratic, I'm a bit suspicious about that, uh, there, that little quadratic thing there, because that's sort of one of the things we're getting to be done, and we've Done it up there, so I think uh, maybe, maybe we should be um, factorising that quadratic, which we could do. So let's have a have a let's have a look at that. So I'm going to put that into a couple of brackets. We've got a three p there. So we've got that 3, that's prime, so only 1 and 3. 
and so it's got to have a 3p there and a p there that'll give the p squared and then here we've got a 4 a minus 4 but we can have 1 times 4 and 2 times 2 are all 4 and then we get our our prime numbers there and but we only want a difference of two so we probably want to keep it pretty low or oh, no the four and the one yeah the, the one times the three so yes and that's a negative and we want a positive there so i'm going to go with three p plus four there and then minus um, minus one. Yeah, minus one. Let me go with something like that. Three p plus four minus one. Yeah, because then I'll get three p squared minus three p plus four p, which gives us one p. And then the negative 4. And then I'm going to leave the k squared out here. So you have to have a bit of a suspicious mind in here. And then we're going to go 9. And I can see that we've got a k outside there. I'm looking. I'm going to undo that 9. I have that luxury of being able to do that. I can see that there's a K here in both of these. Although the 9 and the 16. And then, well, there's many common factors in there. So I'm going to put the K outside the bracket. And then I'm going to multiply that by... Um, I'm going to multiply that by... Uh, p squared well that would be there and minus 16 and I look at that k p squared minus 16 oh dear now when I look at that When I look at that, um, when I look at that, um, what do I get? Oh, hang on, I've left out my nine. I've got a 9p squared minus 16 in there. I left out the 9. So that's there. Now when I look at that, I can see 9p squared minus 16. The 16 is a square number. One of the squares. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. And then if I look at 9, that's a square number 2, and P squared. I think I have got here a classic case of the difference of two squares. It's on my um, formula sheet. Or sometimes, well, growing up in the dim dark ages, we just called it a square minus a square, but now it's known as the difference of two squares and so we can we know that uh, a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b and here we've got um, right I'm going to write it out here k squared 
3p minus 4, p minus 1, over k. That k is going to cancel out of there, I know that. And then I'm going to have 3p, 3p minus 4, all right, because we've got 3p squared and 4 squared and 3p plus 4. So, now it's time to do a little bit of crossing out or, yeah, so that and that. Remember we can do this with uh, multiplication because the order doesn't matter and they're all together. So there we go there and we can take out that K and one of those to give us our answer which is K. P minus 1. And 3P plus 4. K, P minus 1. Oh, hang on. That's, that should be a plus. And I've got an eraser here somewhere. Oh, beautiful. And that will be a minus. Sorry, I've got that all around the wrong way. I crossed out the wrong one. Hang on, let's back the truck up. We're good at that. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. Okay. So that should be P plus 4. I copied that wrong. I copied it wrong. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to cross that out, and we're going to cross that out. We're going to take the 2 out there, and we're going to take the K out of there. Now we go K, P minus 1, over 3P minus 4. There we go. There it is. Okay. So, what do we get here? This is worth three marks. So we get one mark here for during the, doing the numerator. One mark here for doing the denominator. And one mark here for doing the cancelling and rewriting Whew. there we go pretty good all right okay moving right along now expand until there are no brackets oh, well that's pretty clear no brackets okay so well we can, well, we'll do, I, might, I think I'd get rid of the brackets first and then come in. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go first, outer, inner, last, foil. Yeah, and then I'm going to multiply by the 5x, that, that's what I want to do. So um, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, that's my plan, I guess. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Okay, so that's going to be, um, well, I could write it here, couldn't I? 2x squared. Um, minus xy. 4yx and minus 2y squared plus 2y squared 
negative 2y times y plus 2y. Just check everything here. Um, 2x, there's 2x squared. Minus xy. Plus. Oh no. Minus. 4xy. Plus. 2y squared. That's a minus there. Check that. Right, and then it's got 5x outside, so let's pull all that together. 5x. We've got 2x squared minus xy minus 4xy. Again, xy plus 2y squared. Okay, and then we're going to go 5x, 2x squared minus 5xy plus 2y squared. We still have a bracket. We need to multiply the 5 times every term in the bracket. 10x squared minus 25x squared y plus 10xy squared. 10x squared minus 25x squared y plus 10x y squared and yeah one mark there one mark there one mark there all very good okay righty ho yes All right, express as a single fraction in a form without brackets. Express in a single fraction with a f in a form without brackets. I'm going to make that a bit larger so that I can see that and have a good look at it. Okay, so what we've got there is two fractions that... We are taking away or subtracting two fractions that we are subtracting. Hmm. Looking at them there, I can't see anything that's uh, coming to mind. So I'm just going to write over here. So the first thing I would do to subtract fractions, we find a common denominator. And that can be quite easily done. I'll just put a little um, template over here to follow. So if you have A over B, let's say minus C over D, to subtract those, you would come down here and put B, D there on the bottom. And then up here, you would have... AD minus um, BC, like that, that's how it would be done. So you'd multiply these two together, and then these two here, minus these two here, like that, and that's how we subtract fractions. Let's have a have a work with one that we know. Let's say one half minus one third. So um, a half minus a third would be 
I think round about a sixth, but anyway, let's go here. So two times three is six. So we're working in sixths. A half is three sixths. So there's your three times one. And a third is two sixths, two times one. And uh, then that equals one over six. Okay, so yeah, just a little bit of an explanation there. So here we go. We can put in here four x plus two. And then we've got nine r times x plus two minus four x times four. I'll go across this way. Seem to have got a bit of room here. So that equals um, nine XR plus two nines are eighteen minus sixteen X. Okay, yeah, pretty sure that's all good. Yep, and then that will all be over 4x plus 8. And that's it. 4x plus 8. Hmm. Okay. So we get one mark here and one mark here. Let's have a quick back check back back. To the question express as a single fraction in a form without brackets yes there we go we've done it okay and two marks four minutes it should take i am taking a little longer to do these because i'm adding in explanations and things like that so if i was doing it in an exam situation I would be taking less time and I'm having a lovely cup of tea as I do it so stay relaxed and uh, let's go express as a single fraction in its simplest form okay so Let's look at this question. We can just make that a bit bigger. Two marks again. Okay. Right, now what have we got there? We've got a divide. We have a divide. Um, all right, now uh, there's nothing there except divide. How do we deal with divide? So let's say one half divided by one quarter. So a half is two quarters, so if we divide a half by a quarter, we'll get two. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we make that work? Well, we go one half, and then we multiply by the reciprocal, which means we flip it over. Okay? Change divide to multiply by the reciprocal, which we uh, 
that's the reciprocal spelt like that reciprocal means flip it over and then to multiply fractions top times tops four times one is four two times one is two four divided by two is two so that's all we've got to do so let's let's do that eight 8x plus over 10y to the fourth. Change divide to multiply. Flip it over. Y. 4x to the power of 5. Okay, so... We can um, we can do some cancelling, top and bottom cancelling here now, but I think I'll I want to do it. I'm going to multiply everything together. So we get eight x y over ten fours of forty um, x. To the power of five, y to the power of four. Okay, so um, we can just um, I'm just going to uh, make my pencil. It's fifteen at the moment. I'm going to make it a bit narrower just because I want to do some cancelling. So I'm going to take the 8 out of there, put that into 1 because 8 goes into 45. 1 over 5. I'm going to take that x out of there. I'll make that x to the power of 4. And oh, that'll be 1. And I'll change that y there. That will become 1. And that will become y to the power of 3. Okay, so now let's... Uh, whip it back up to 15 again. Make my pen 15 again. And let's bring all that together. So that's 1, 1 times 1 times 1, over 5, x, 4, y, 3. And, yeah. 5, x, 4, y, 3. Okay, and that's worth two marks. One mark for the reciprocal. One mark here for the reciprocal. And one mark here for the simplification. And, yeah, getting the right answer. Whew. Right, and now, now what? Um... Okay, this one, simplify, simplify, right, well, um, my first glance here is I've got the square root there, and uh, the square root of x is equal to x to the power of a half. Now, if I put indices, you know, like that, the, the, I find them easier to work with. So I'm going to just write this out. I'll write this out here. X cubed, Y cubed, um, over X to the 4, 
y to the sixth to the half. And then I'm going to get rid of that half by multiplying half times 4 is 2, half times 3 is 6. So then we get, very simply, x cubed, y cubed, over x2, y3. And then we'll just make our pen down to 7 there and as you'll see the x squared can come out of there become a 1 and that will become an x and that will come out of there becomes a 1 1 okay back to 15 Also, and that equals x over one, which equals x. Okay, two marks so. Yes, one mark here, and then one mark here for simplifying. Money for jam, that one, money for jam. And that, I think that finishes that page. It does. There it is. So we're going to move on to, ooh, is this the last page? Yes, it is. Now, these questions here. So let's have a look at this question here. Now, the Mariana, Mariana Trench. A trench. A trench is a hole in the ground. Whoa, five marks. Ten minutes. Okay. And extends down. So that's a 11034 meters below sea level at its deepest point. Express this distance in engineering notation to three significant figures. Okay, so that's 11034. Now we wanted an engineering notation. So in engineering notation, the tens are in multiples of three. Uh, so we'll have 10 to the zero, 10, three, 10, six. And this aligns with the, you know, your kilometer, kilometers, the kilos, like the powers of three in our units. Kilometers, milli, that sort of thing. And so it's just like, um, it's just like um, standard form, except that just has powers of three. And it's not limited um, by the, um, not limited to the, um, you know, one number before the decimal place. It can have more. It's just, this, it's the same number. The number hasn't changed. It's just the way we're showing it. So at the moment, it's uh, there. And, well, if we, if we, well, we can just, at the moment here, we can just work in, one, two, three, and then there's two. So we just go over three, and let's say so that would be 11.034 times 10 to the power of three. 10 to the power of three is a thousand. So if we 
multiplied that by a thousand, we'd get eleven o three four. So that's that's all good. Now, three significant figures. So in this case here, in this case here, the um, the zero is a is significant. We cut it off there. Three significant figures. Oops, no, we want it back at 15. Hmm. Fifteen. Yeah. Like that. Okay, so that equals eleven point zero times ten to the power of three. Um so that would be eleven kilometers. Probably eleven point zero kilometers. Yeah. So it, that indicates the the accuracy of the and uh, so that's there, and that, that was just worth one mark. Okay, so just one for that. Okay. Now, Mount Everest, Mount Everest is 8849 metres tall. Tall, so it goes up. What percentage is this? Of the depth of the Mariana Trench. Okay, well, a percentage is a fraction. So, what percentage is the height of Mount Everest of the Mount Mariana's Trench? So, we can see the Mariana Trench is um, 11,034 meters deep. Whereas the Mount Everest is 8,849 metres tall. So it is not as tall as the trench is deep. And we make it into a fraction. 8849 over 11034. That's our fraction, and then we multiply that by a hundred percent, and that will give us hopefully one mark. Well, let's go. Where's the my um, calculator? I'm using my calculator here, so let's. Uh, Go uh, eight 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 four nine. Yes, divided by eleven o three four equals times one hundred. Ah, right, eighty point one nine seven five. Ah. Uh, what percentage? Um, and it says 80.1975. So what my calculator says. 7.11%. Whoa, that's super accurate. Now, how do they want this? What percentage is this of the depth? Well, what percentage? Okay, so it doesn't give us any guidelines here uh, with regards to the accuracy or the number of decimal places. So if we go right back to the beginning, what does it say? It says, give answers to three significant figures, three significant figures, unless otherwise specified. So there we go. Three significant figures is what we need to do because it's not specified here. And uh, there's the third significant figure oh, right there. Um, right in here. There's the third significant figure right there. And as you see, as you can see, that would get rounded up and uh, rounded up to 
Um, we actually say approximately equal to, because we're rounding, if we want to be super technical, 80.2%. There you go. One mark. Now. Okay. Uh, that's that there. Okay. And now, um, what do we got here? Um. Uh, now okay we've got two questions here the earth has an average radius of 6371 times 10 to the 3 meters or 6371 kilometers Average radius. Express this in decimal notation. Decimal notation. Right. Decimal notation. Well, what it's showing there is in actually scientific, no, well, sort of. It would be 6.731 times 10 to the 6th, really. Uh, it could do that, so I don't. It's sort of in a bit of a hard to say, really. But decimal notation is just your normal number notation, and so it's six, three, seven, one, three zeros, zero, zero, zero. Don't forget the meters. And this is the answer to question one. Show that clearly, like that, and you will get one mark. Now, what percent of the Earth's radius is the depth of the Mariana Trench? And what percent of the Earth's radius well, that's actually, there's actually two questions there, isn't there? So this is two. And then we've got A and B. And they're both the same, really. And uh, we're, they're percent, and uh, so there'd be one each. And we're going to do those as... Three significant figures, I guess. So what percent of the Earth's radius is the depth of the Mariana Trench? Okay, so the Mariana Trench is... Um, 11034. Okay, a little bit bigger. So we've got 1103. Three, four, over the earth, six, three, seven, one, zero, 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 times 100 percent equals, now let's uh, see what we've got here, one, one, oh, three, four, divided by Six three seven one zero 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 equals times one hundred equals one seven three one nine O oh, uh, equals zero point one seven Three one nine zero point one seven three one nine percent and to three significant figures because it's not specified 
zero point one seven three per cent zero point one seven three per cent one mark and one final mark B now this is for uh, Mount Everest eight eight four nine eight eight four nine now that's going to be a smaller percentage isn't it Okay, six, three, seven, one thousand times one hundred percent equals, and we'll put that into perspective of the calculator. Uh, eight, eight, four, nine, is that correct? Eight, eight, four, nine, it is. Eight eight four nine divided by six three seven one zero 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 equals and times one hundred percent equals zero point one three eight eight nine zero point one three Eight eight nine zero point one three eight eight nine, which is equal to zero point one three nine one three nine percent three significant figures. That's it there. As you can see, there's a one. So the three stays the same here. There's an eight, so it goes up to nine. One three nine percent. One final mark to give the total of twenty three marks. And there you go. So there you are. There you have it. I have gone through the test one with the explanation. Uh, the upcoming reset will be similar, but different questions. Uh, the things that I've pointed out and showed you to look at uh, are all there. Um, if you have any questions, uh, contact me, Mario at Mario.com. Uh, this will be on my YouTube channel. Um, also, I would recommend that you get a blank you know go through and make sure you can do and understand each of the questions on this quiz then get a blank copy of it and yeah have a go on your on your own and make sure you can get the questions right and you can follow the logic of it all um, i say this a million times now a million and one uh, that if you cannot do the questions here on this test when you've been through it and you know the answers what chance will you have in the reset so yeah there you go i hope this is helpful for you thank you very much cheers see you